to MFB TV on Thursday the 9th of March. Well yesterday was Phil the Spreadsheet's second announcement since becoming Chancellor and his one and only spring budget as henceforth there will be just the autumn statement to look forward to in future years. Now, as much as he hasn't handed anything back to the buy select sector, he has at least generally left it alone, and this is probably to be welcomed. We suspect that he will avoid tinkering until he sees how the tax receipts start to land in January, 19, January 2019 before, before taking any further specific steps. That's not to say that a wider review of the stamp duty land tax structure might not benefit property owners more generally in the autumn statement. So we asked our technical team what they took away from the budget that might affect you as landlords and investors. And the question we asked them was, do you think that the changes to dividend allowance and national insurance will have any implications for landlords using a limited company to hold buy to lets? And here's their specific comment. Whilst the reduction in the dividend allowance will increase the tax cost in extracting buy to let profits from a limited company and as such is unwelcome, buy to let landlords using a limited company will continue to be taxed on profit. Contrast this with the situation for individual landlords in buy to let who are taxed on turnover, less costs of management, and the continuing appeal of the limited company route is evident. The impact of NI changes is more complex and depends on whether the individual landlord operated their buy to let portfolio as an investment or as a business. If as an investment, then the profit is not subject to Nash Insurance, but if as a business, then the individual should be paying Class 4 NI and the increase in this will be a further incentive to incorporate. Outside of the budget, we have also heard and seen references to the offset of interest within a limited company being referred to as a tax loophole. This expression is incorrect, unhelpful to all of our interests and sensationalist. The full utilisation of interest as a business expense within a limited company has been a matter of fact in tax terms in perpetuity. To conclude, we have seen a purchase activity pickup in the buy to let space, with more than 75 of those transactions now being carried out in a limited company. Our advice continues to be that you should always take tax advice before speaking to brokers or funders, but just to back up the availability of supply, we do now have 15 lenders offering more than 200 products to those of you who choose to purchase properties in limited companies. As ever, give us a call on 0845 3456 788.